Hi, I'm Andy, Andy Ho. And um, I, I was born in Hong Kong and uh, really went to school in Hong Kong and, and subsequently uh, went to Imperial College for my undergraduate and Oxford for my DPhil. And after that, I um, got a postdoc in, in the United States, in, Carolina, uh, in, in, in Yale. And then I joined um, NUS, National University of Singapore. And I've been there 31 years. In the last five years, I was actually with the Institute of Materials of Research and Engineering, IMRI, in A Star, and running the research institute. And then um, came to University of Hong Kong three months ago. And now, um, apart from being a chair professor of chemistry, I also uh, as the vice president of research. Uh, there's also a, a very interesting positions uh, in the University of Hong Kong. So um, that's, where, that's where I am. Chemistry in Asia is really undergoing, um, I would call it revolutionary changes in, in many ways. Um, I, I think there's a greater need for, for innovation uh, because of the society development, uh, because of the human needs because of urbanization and because of a whole range of social economic issues. So I think the whole region uh, requires solutions. I think in a way, if you look at China, China's development, I think China, is, in my view, has provided a lot of leads and, and, and problems for Asia and the world to solve. So if you look very carefully at the um, China and I think it is a is a big big challenge there for example uh, uh, the purity of air for example and the water for example the safety of the food for example uh, urbanization as a result of urbanization the whole range of social and economic issues that you have to tackle so so in many ways I think it creates opportunities for chemistry to develop in fact we believe that chemistry offer many solutions and this is why um, I think if you look at chemistry in a very innovative way, and many people can come in, and, and, and Singapore, for example, Hong Kong, for example, Thailand, for example, Indonesia, for example, these are examples that I think uh, if you connect solutions to problems, if you connect innovations to enterprise, to research, and you see that it is shaping the chemistry very well, and, and the future of, of chemistry in Asia is terribly exciting, in my view. In Europe, uh, it's a completely different world as far as Asia is concerned. And first of all, uh, chemistry, it, we are at different stages. I think, I think Europe is, is much more advanced in many ways in terms of enterprise, in terms of companies, for example, in terms of the chemistry, for example. And, but I think what I, I like about uh, Europe is that uh, it has a, a spectrum of opportunities and research is at an extremely high level. At the same time, uh, innovation has gone through several generations of refinement and development. At the same time, all this comes along a whole range of enterprise development uh, from multinational companies, MNCs, to very small SMEs, we call it small medium enterprises, but they are highly innovative. At the same time, you have a large number of startups, for example, in, in, in Switzerland is a very good example, and Germany as well. So if you look at Europe, I think it, it provides one model for Asia to look at. At the same time, uh, let me give you some examples of what um, it, Europe has done particularly well. Let me look at uh, Germany as an example. If you look at Germany, uh, I particularly like the model of having uh, strong universities. At the same time, you have the Max Planck, which is really focusing in, in great research. At the same time, you have the, the Fraunhofer uh, that is really existing to me for the industries, by the industries. So, so with that competing, what I call the value chain, it really uh, raised the overall level for everybody uh, to participate. So this is very good, that's a good model. And you look at UK, U UK, apart from the universities, you have a number of the, uh, 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 the catapult center, for example, which is also recently set up uh, for the industry. I think there is a very good model over there.
FACS, the Federation of the Asian Chemical Societies, actually it is an extremely important organization. Again, in my view, uh, it has about 30 countries across Asia, as far north as R Russia, as go down south as Australia and New Zealand, and as east as Japan and, and Korea, and, and to the west as the, the Middle East. So, so if you look in the whole spectrum, uh, if you do it right, I think the FACS will have enormous impact on the chemical developments in the world beyond Asia. But of course, Asia being Asia, fast being vast is, is its advantage. But at the same time, it poses a range of challenges. For example, it is very heterogeneous. And the chemistry development in Japan cannot be compared to the chemistry in Bangladesh, for example. And, and those in Indonesia cannot be compared to those in Russia and China. And at the same time, and Singapore and Korea compared to Middle East. So, so these are examples of Asia. So as, a, as an organization, as at the moment I am the, the president of the FACS, uh, uh, one of the, my big challenge, of course, is that uh, how to extract value from in an organization which is so heterogeneous and how to accommodate all views and viewpoints into a focal point as something that would benefit the entire Asia and how to accommodate uh, different requirements from different countries whatever they can contribute whatever they want to benefit is, is, is FACS being the, being the right platform to provide these solutions uh, common solutions to all countries these are the challenges I, th I think facing FACS enormously You are not the first one to ask me the question. Many people ask me uh, why I left Singapore for Hong Kong. I think it's a very good question. Um, well, first of all, I was born in Hong Kong. Uh, I think that's a very good reason. The second I think is that, um, yes, I lived uh, 31 years in Singapore and I am a Singaporean. And I think Singapore has taught me a lot. Uh, if you try to look at uh, my, my professional and academic background, uh, being 31 years in NUS, the National University of Singapore, uh, which is well outside the top 100, 200 ranking uh, 20 years ago and today it is easily among the top 30 and I think NUS development over 30 years uh, is amazing I think I have learned a lot I have benefited a lot and I feel that uh, at this point of time uh, there's a lot for me to contribute uh, to Hong Kong but uh, on a more uh, even more serious and interesting part is that uh, in the last five years, I was running a research institute in materials. Uh, this is a very important institute because it is using materials as a platform to innovate and, and how innovation can benefit uh, the industry and the society and how we use material research to grow new industry and to grow new jobs, high value jobs. Now if you look carefully at that, uh, this is really innovation at its best. So, uh, five years in A-Star and IMRI uh, taught me a lot and I feel that at this point I really have enough, I can contribute to Hong Kong's development and, and, and just at this time uh, I, I was over a great position in the University of Hong Kong I couldn't possibly refuse and I accepted it and I think I do feel I have something to contribute to Hong Kong and the University of Hong Kong in particular and, and, and being, being a, 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 a looking after research is something that suits me perfectly. So to me, that is an obvious choice.